in the previous class, we looked at a two port network which is driven by a voltage source and came to the resistance, basically a signal source, and loaded on the other side by a resistance. And then we calculated the gain and found that uh, the highest gain is obtained when the two port basically behaves like an ideal voltage controlled current loop. Okay. And thus, of course, this is based on Y parameters. If you choose some other uh, set of parameters, let's say Z parameters, then you will find that essentially the device should behave like an ideal current control for the source and form. So, if you have uh, a device like that, then you will get the highest gain. Now, it so turns out that the devices that we do have in reality do correspond very well to what we get from Y parameters. Okay. In other words, the parameters we would like to have in the incremental 2 port, the nonlinear 2 port has uh, the incremental equivalent of the nonlinear 2 port. It is a linear uh, 2 port network with some y parameters, and we would like them to be D. Okay. Now, what does it mean for the large signal characteristics? First of all, the large signal characteristics are you have two nonlinear functions of the two port voltages. Okay, and if you want to depict these graphically, you have to draw four graphs, each of those uh, variables uh, I1 and I2 versus each of the dependent, independent variables. Okay. So, what should the, this look like? Let us say the graph of I1 versus V1. From the y parameters, can you tell what should huh? I1 is 0, y? does not say that at all. Right? It should be constant. So, essentially, there should be. Now, of course, uh, at the operating point. So, there should be some operating point where the current is independent of both I1 and I2. That is what it means, right? Because the partial derivatives are uh, 0 both with respect to I1 and with respect to I2. Okay. So, essentially, you would want the input port current, port 1 current to be constant. Constant meaning independent of the two variables in some, some operating point. Okay. It could, uh, it should be like this somewhere and the same level here. Of course, later elsewhere it could do that, but it only means that you have to pick the operating point over there. Okay. So, all uh, it does have to be there. You just have to. So everything is based on this incremental analysis. So, it means that the partial derivative has to be 0 somewhere, okay, at the operating point. That does not mean that it is 0. If it is 0 everywhere, it will surely work, but it does not have to be. Okay. Of course, if the region is tiny, I mean, if there is only one point where that happens, then maybe, and after that, the derivative steeply increase, that may not be very useful either, because then the uh, size of the signal you can apply while still uh, while still obeying the small signal assumption will be quite small. Okay. So, but you do not certainly not, do not need it anywhere, everywhere, but I do not think it is possible also. Okay. It is hard to imagine the passivity constraint because you have many variables here, but I do not think it is possible to have I1 just as a constant everywhere, I mean for all values of equal and That will probably violate the passivity stuff in some way. Okay. It also depends on I2, but uh, uh, yeah, that will, uh, that will not be possible. Okay. Any other questions? In our case, in the MOS transistor, it just so happens that I1 is 0, which is great. Okay, 0 everywhere, that is possible, and then uh, because of that, both y11 and y12 are indeed 0, at least as far as uh, low frequency signals are okay. i2 versus v1, what should it be? Huh? Yeah, it should increase and quite steeply. Okay, again, it has dimensions, so it depends on the scales we choose for uh, i2 and v1, but you would like. 
some curve of that sort. Okay. And I2 versus V2. Yeah, it should be constant. It can be different constants for different values of V1, but I2 versus V2 for a given value of V1 must also be a constant, something like this. for the current uh, mass transistor, does it follow this? It does, right? At least uh, I1 anyway is exactly zero. So certainly uh, these two are satisfied. And I2 versus V1, it is some steep curve. Of course, there is no such thing as the steepest, right? Unless it's a vertical line. So uh, it has some uh, square dependence on VGS. So there is some uh, sharpness. And actually the Higher you go, the steeper it gets, right? I mean, the further you go to the left, it's a parabola after all. So, the further you go to the right, the steeper it gets. Okay? The slope itself goes on increasing, isn't it? It goes like that. Whereas uh, I2 versus V2, in fact, we do have a constant region. Of course, uh, in fact, that's an example where I2 versus V2, it's certainly not constant everywhere for all values of V2, right? Uh, we saw that the Train current ID will be constant only if the voltage is beyond a certain value, which is VGS minus VT. Okay, this is fine. So this is the kind of uh, characteristic that you should have in a good amplifier device. Okay, so it doesn't have to be a square law. I mean, in our case, we have VGS minus VT square. It doesn't have to be a square, but it has to be some steep dependence. Okay. Now it turns out, which uh, we will come to later in the course, there is also a device which is the bipolar reactor transistor and before the MOSFETs became very popular and uh, MOSFET technology was perfected, they were the ones that were being used. And they also kind of follow this, except I1 is not exactly zero, I1 is some uh, small number but uh, largely uh, constant I would say, okay. Actually it is not even constant with respect to V1, it is uh, constant with respect to V2. And I2 is, again, there is some reason where just like this, above a certain voltage, it will remain constant, but below that, it will sharply change. Okay. It just means that you have to choose the operating point somewhere here. If the curve is actually doing that, clearly, you don't want to choose it here for an amplifier. Okay. And this, uh, this part of it, I2 versus V1, it's even sharper in some sense than the most consistent because there we have an exponential, whereas here we have a square one. Exponential is T4 uh, square, right? So it does turn out that the devices we do have conform to this very well. So using this Y parameters for all our modeling also makes it uh, convenient to analyze both MOS transistor circuits and bipolar transistor circuits using by and large the same method. Okay. Now going back to the characteristics. We have the MOS transistor. So it's controlling voltage. The current is primarily dependent on this VGS, the gate source voltage. The current flows from drain to source. And because gate current is zero, whatever current goes into the drain comes out of the source. Okay. Then There is a drain source voltage which does have some influence on the current. Okay. So the device first has to be turned on. There is a sort of threshold effect. If the input voltage or gate source voltage is below a certain value, the device is just completely off. Okay. And if it's above that, then there are two different cases. One for uh, small values of VDS, we have a current which actually does depend on VDS. And then 
for larger values of EDS, the current becomes independent of EDS. Of course, this is sort of the zero order model of the MOSFET. In the simple model, we have a certain value of drain source voltage. The current is independent of the drain source voltage. Okay. And this entire model is valid only for uh, positive values of VDS and CGS. Okay. So yesterday we plotted these characteristics. Um, okay, I don't have to keep saying this again and again. IG is zero. So yesterday we plotted these characteristics for uh, a transistor which has mu and C ox of. Uh, 100 microampere per volt square, a threshold voltage of 1 volt, and width over length ratio of uh, 1. Okay? ID versus VGS, what does it look like? What does it look like? ID versus VGS. Yeah, for very small values of uh, VGS, what is it? Zero. Okay. Up to what point is it zero? 3D, that is 1 volt. And after 1 volt, what happens? The threshold voltage is 1 volt. What is the current when VGS is 2 volts? So, now by the way, we have ignored the variable VDS here, I will assume a large VDS so that the transistor operates in saturation region, ok. So, what is the value of uh, drain current for uh, VDS of 2 volts? 50 microamperes, ok. And 3 volts, 200, 4 volts. 450. Okay, so does that and so on. Okay. ID versus VDS, what does that look like? So, for VGS less than the threshold voltage, of course, it will be, there will be no current. And for VGS equals 2 volts, it saturates to 50. Basically, the currents given by this curve are the saturation currents, right? And for uh, VGS equals 3 volts, it is 200 microamperes and so on, okay. These are the, this is the saturation region, okay. So, for each one, the curve is starting from the corresponding VGS minus VT. So, this is VGS equals 4 volts, VGS equals 3 volts, VGS equals 2 volts. Okay. And below that, it falls to 0. Okay. If you join these points, which divide the triode region and the saturation region, what sort of curve will that be? Parabola. Huh? Yeah, the same as the other curve, but shifted to the left by 1 volt. Okay? 
isn't it? Because those points basically correspond to VGF minus one volt. That's all. Okay. The same saturation current. So clearly, you have to operate in these regions so that uh, the amplifier has a high gain. Okay. Any questions about this? Any questions about the model? The simple model is uh, used. Now, the very modern MOSFET with a very short channel length that doesn't have the square law, that is square dependence. Okay. But thankfully, the current still increases with VGF, so we are still okay. Uh, and then also, there are other kinds of details that are to be filled in. Okay. The actual model of the MOS transistor is quite complicated. This uh, model has how many parameters? 3, V1, C, O, X, and V, D. The MOSFET model that I use for circuit uh, design, it has like 200 parameters. Okay. There is no way of uh, doing any hand calculation with that. So, use a computer. The, so, the kind of calculation you carry out with this will be quite inaccurate. But uh, the main point in design is to know which way to move things. Okay. That is, you have a transistor, some, you start with some design. Very, very unlikely that, uh, first of all, in design, it is never the case as in the exam papers where you have five variables and five, some constraint P1 and you solve these and you will get the five variables in EP. Okay? Invariably, the number of uh, variables will be many more than the number of uh, constraints. So, a lot of things are based on judgment and experience. But of course, that's not a catch all for doing some random stuff that you want. Okay? So it has to be informed by uh, some theory. So, this kind of theory is still useful. It will guide you. Uh, in which way to go, okay? So, you design something, let's say, based on the crude model, and then you put the sophisticated model, you find that the gain is small. But the crude model is still useful, it will tell you what to do to the MOSFET, for instance, or maybe to some other component in the circuit, okay? So, if you want to increase the gain, you have to change things in some way, and that's what you get out of uh, all of them. In general, all of the theory is better, okay? Because uh, it's been only extremely simple problems that you'll be able to throw in every detail of uh, what's going on into the uh, equation and get all of the uh, values of the variables right away, okay? So, there is some optimization stuff and that is guided by this type of simple model, okay? And without having a sufficiently simple model, you can't do anything. You are completely relying on the computer and you don't know which way to change anything, okay? So, keep in mind that this model is quite crude uh, for today's MOSFET, but it's still quite useful for the time, okay? So, the other extreme is you have the computer model. That anyway, there is no hope of doing any hand calculation. So, for that you use the simulation, okay? So, now tell me what the, okay, let me pick some operating point or you help me pick some. Where should I bias my MOS transistor? Huh? I mean, just pick some number, tell me. Give me, okay, give me some value of VGS and VDS. VGS value, 4 volt, okay? And uh, VDS value? 5 volts. Okay, so we are here. Yeah? Is that correct? Let's so say I have, I had a small increment to that voltage. What happens to the drain current? Huh? Remains constant, why? It changes. How much will it change by? Huh? Yeah, so calculate the small signal model and tell me. Okay? Yeah, yeah, what is the value of y to 1? Okay, first of all, what will be the small signal model of this? So, we have the gate, drain and source and in the small signal model also, I have the gate, drain and source. So, what will be in the small signal model? Yeah. 
what is between i mean there are only three terminals so pick any two terminals and tell me what is between them what is between gate and source open obviously gate current is zero so gate has to go into an open circuit so what is between drain and source what is that four volt into y12 hmm y21 why yeah so and this uh, value will be four volt times y21 is it why why is four volt times y21 Ah, you are mixing up the RAM and COM signals already. Oh, yeah. Okay. And the Y to one will depend on this four volts and five volts. So it will be Y to one times VCS. Will there be anything else between drain and source? Huh? Resistance. Parallel resistance. What is the value of the resistance? Why do do? How much is that? Zero. So okay, it's not there. Okay. So please calculate the value of Y to one for this operating point. What is it? How? What is Y to one? How is it related to the last signal characteristics? Huh? So yeah, please do that. First, find the expression for the uh, small signal parameter. I mean, in this case, we have only one, right? Y11 is zero, Y12 is zero, and Y21, Y22 is zero. So Y21 only. So, what is the expression for Y21 in general, and also for this particular operating point? So the whole idea behind the small signal model is that with uh, four volts and five volts, you have a certain drain current. And that's the operating point current, and that you can only get from the nonlinear expressions for the drain current. Okay, in this case, that's also very easy. It just happens that that is 450 microampere. The point is, after that, if you change any of them a little bit, let's say I change the gate voltage to something else, gate source voltage to something else. That is, I make it 4 volts plus lower case VGS. Then This has to be recalculated. You have to put 4 volts plus VGS minus VT squared, but that is approximated by this 450 microamperes plus okay, where this partial derivative is calculated at a gate voltage of uh, 4 volts and the gate source voltage of 4 volts and drain source voltage of 5 volts. Okay. Now, what is that? We have. The drain current to be mu and c of y two w by l v g s minus v t squared. So you differentiate this with respect to v g s. You get mu and c of w by l v g s minus v t. Extremely simple expression. In our case, this is 100 microampere per volt per w by l is one and v g s minus v t is three volts. Okay. So at this particular operating point, the value is 100 times 3. That's 300, and the units are of course same as that of the conductance, micro siemens times VGS. This is the effort that is saved. Of course, in this case, calculating the square may not have been that difficult, but when this is embedded in another circuit, then it becomes more cumbersome because then you have to Solve a set of uh, coupled equations, right? That is constraint imposed by the MOSFET and every MOS transistor and every uh, other component in the circuit, and you have to solve the simultaneous equations. That day for a linear uh, circuit with four simultaneous equations, I mean I didn't get a single right answer. So I can only imagine what happens if I connect another resistor to a MOSFET. Okay, I'll never have the answer at all. Okay, although it is possible to solve it. So this makes it easy. This incremental analysis. The only thing is, this is valid only for some small enough value of uh, VCS. How small is that small? We will uh, not specify it now. Okay, we will later get some measure for it. And that's all that's there to it. In the uh, in the saturation region, there is only one uh, uh, one of the four y parameters that is not zero, and that's this. 
And again, because we are now talking about a specific device, we don't use the generic terminology. This, the standard terminology for uh, this is GM and it stands for transconductance. Okay. It's like conductance, it's a ratio of current to voltage, but it's not uh, voltage, I mean current going between two terminals divided by the voltage across the same two terminals. That's a conductance. Here, it is the current between these two terminals divided by the voltage across those two. So that's why it's a transfer conductance or transconductance. Okay, and it's usually called GM and GM at this operating point is 300 micro siemens. Is this okay? So this is the uh, small signal model of a MOS transistor in saturation region. Okay. If I made the zero volts, what would be the small signal model? That is VDS, I make it zero volts. Yeah, but what is the model? The model remains the same as this. Huh? Y22 will not be zero. That's pretty clear because this we are operating here. The slope is not. Uh, zero clearly. Okay. So uh, please find the values. By the way, this conductance that you have across drain source, let's call GDS, the drain to source conductance, and this is GM. So for this new operating point, please calculate the values of GM and GDS. So what do you get? What's the value of GM? GM. GM is zero. Okay. And GDS? 300 micro siemens. Okay, so now we are in this linear or diode region. So ID is neon C ox W by L BGS minus BT times BDS minus BDS squared by 2. Okay, so GM is the partial derivative with respect to VGS, which is mu and C of W by L times VDS. Okay. And GDS is the partial derivative with respect to VDS, which makes it this factor here times. What is it? VGS minus VT minus VDS. Okay. So when VDS equal to 0, GM equals 0. This is absolute worst the thing, right? For an amplifier, that is. That is, you make some change here, nothing changes there. Okay. That's kind of obvious because if you have 0 volts across this, what is the current in the MOS transistor? It's not off. Off means something else. I mean, I refer to the transistor being off as when VGS is below the threshold. Okay. VGS is well above the threshold, but uh, VDS is zero. What is the current? Zero. zero. Okay. Because all these, all these curves here come to the origin here, right? For VDS equal to zero, it is zero. After all, I mean, if you go back to sort of the intuitive picture of the MOS transistor that I showed, what is that? Yeah. Essentially, you form a resistance between these two and modulate its resistivity. Okay. If you apply 0 volts across the resistance, it doesn't matter what the resistance value is. The current is going to be 0. Okay. So, if you have very small voltage across this, the current will be uh, small and for 0 volts, it will be exactly 0. And that's the way of thinking about this triode and saturation region. I mean, while applying the inequality, sometimes you may get confused or when you have negative quantities, you may form compliance and this and that. But the point is, if you take these drain and source terminals, bring them close together, you will have small current, it will go into triode region. If you pull them further apart, it will go towards saturation region. Okay. So, uh, and also with this uh, basic square law model, the value of GDS when VDS equals 0 is exactly the same as the value of GM in saturation region. Okay. Both were 300 micro siemens, right? Isn't it? So, 
you get the same expression this mu and cr w by l times pgs minus bt so at uh, uh, vds equals 0 we have gm equals 0 and gds equals 300 micro demons and if i plot gm versus vds for a given vgs what does that look like gm versus vds what kind of variation will we have yeah linear so it starts from what value zero and what happens when does it reach the does it go on increasing or? up to what value will it increase yes what is the variation of gm versus vds huh straight line okay so what straight line what is the value of gm for uh, vds equals 3 volts vds equals 3 volts 300 yeah 300 micro siemens what happens beyond that after that it doesn't change right okay and if i plot gds versus vds what does that look like yeah. what is that yeah and then it will follow Four of two zero and remains zero. So here also again, this again shows you that you should operate where the GM is trans conductance is highest and the out, this is called the output conductance DDS of the MOSFET transistor is lowest. Okay, and you can also see actually while of course it's most desirable to operate in saturation region, this part is the saturation region. If you go a little bit in. it may still be okay because gm is still higher than gds okay and in some desperate situations you do do that you know uh, there will be some constraint that you can't have as much vds and you may have to go into it but as you go further and further in the gain of this uh, keeps on reducing okay because so let's say i have just this network i apply my input voltage here and this is vgs this is gm vgs i have gds what will be the output voltage what is the output voltage you know yeah minus gm by gds times bi okay now if this were the small signal model of a mos transistor this number of course would be highest in saturation region and as you go into the triode region it will start falling and it will finally fall to zero when you go to the origin okay so obviously you have to keep on this side okay any questions about this this is very basics of the mos transistor we know the large signal model now we know the small signal model as well and the small signal model in uh, saturation region is really simple it just has a single voltage controlled current source exactly as we wanted okay So now, if you have a certain load resistance and you know want a certain gain, all you have to do is to decide the, the value of GM, and then based on that, choose the operating point. Okay, you have to go backwards while doing this. I gave you the operating point and asked you to calculate GM, but usually it's the other way around. You have some functionality for the circuit that you want to achieve that will tell you that you want to have a certain GM, and that will tell you how to set the operating point. Okay. Now let me digress a little bit from amplifiers. So if you look at this expression in the triode region, this is valid for VDS smaller than VGS minus VT. Okay. So now if VDS, in fact, is much smaller than this. What's an approximation I could make? If VDS is much smaller than VDS minus VT, yeah, what could I do? 
depends on vgs okay so it's actually an electronically controllable resistor okay so in general if you can control any quantity electronically that's a better because today everything is done electronically right so if you can adjust something electrically that is good okay whereas if you take a, let's say a piece of metal or some other resistive material how do you change its resistance you have to cut a different piece right you have to basically use a different length or different width or something I mean, that's not something you can do on the fly. You can make a different value of resistance, but that will be a different resistor. But this is an electronically tunable resistor, and it has its uses. And because this relationship is linear, this region is called the linear region. Okay. Of course, it's not perfectly linear. If we go back to the curves, near the origin there are uh, straight lines of that slope, and after that they start deviating more and more. Okay. But there is some useful range of voltages where you can just think of it as a linear resistor, and it is actually used like that. and also the fact that you can uh, tune the resistance value with vgs is interesting okay so we don't use much of it for making amplifiers but there are other applications for it okay any questions about any of these things so that's the linear region and this is now I say electronically by adjusting the value of VGS tunable resistor. Okay. So, for instance, if you make an RC low pass filter, you know that, uh, or in general any filter with RC, you know that the common frequency of the filter is one by RC radians per second. Okay. And if you made the R using a MOSFET transistor. You can change the frequency also. You can make it electronically tunable. Okay, so it is used like that sometimes. Or any other thing you can imagine. Now, let's go and design an amplifier. Let's say I have an input voltage source, okay, with a 100 kilo series resistance, and the load resistance is also 100 kilo. Okay. Now I know that a MOS transistor can be used as an amplifier, or it can be used as a voltage control current source, and that's what I'm going to throw in here. Okay. I'm not built the complete circuit yet. Now I'm going back from the I'm going from the specification. And I want the magnitude of the gain. That is, the gain could be plus or minus, but the gain should be 20. Okay. So now, if I throw the MOSFET in here, what will it have? The small signal model of the MOSFET. What is there in the small signal model of the MOSFET? I will first of all make sure that it operates in the saturation region, right? I want to get as high a gain as possible. So, what's in the small signal model? Just the voltage control current source. So I have to connect the gate here, the drain there, and the source over there. Then this will be GM times VGS. I mean, I'm not throwing this from scratch, right? Because we 
did this earlier. I connected a source and load to a two port. That's exactly what I'm doing. Okay. Now this two port is the MOS fan system. That's all. Okay. These two terminals are common. That is the source. This is the gate. That's the drain. So I haven't done anything uh, new or uh, uh, unexpected here. Okay. All I said was we now have a device which is the MOS fan system which does behave like we wanted it to. So now we will try and make an amplifier. Okay. So now tell me, like, how should I bias the, how should I set the operating point of the MOSFET system? Huh? Check for? Yeah, so what should be the value of GM now? Please calculate. So this is, let me call this RS and this is RL. Okay, first of all, what's the output voltage I get here between these two terminals? What will be the value of VCS? VI, because no current is going through the source resistance. So, what's the output voltage? V0 minus GM RL times VI. Okay, so the gain is minus GM RL and the magnitude of that should be 20. So, what should be GM? Please calculate. I mean, this is an extremely simple calculation, right? I don't have to prompt every time I say ask for some calculation. Yeah. 0 0.2? 0 0.2 milliwatt. Millisiemens, yeah. So, GM times 100 kilo ohms should be 20. This gives you GM to be 0 0.2 millisiemens or 200 microsiemens. Okay? I mean, already know that the sensible way to, this is the GM that we want, okay? Obviously, the sensible way to bias, uh, set up the operating point is to set it up in operate in saturation region so that we get just this GM and nothing else. So, what should be the operating point? To get a GM of 200 micro siemens, what should be the operating point? That's now we evaluated the expression for GM, right, in saturation region. So, Please go and uh, figure out what the operating point must be. In saturation region, the expression for GM is million C ox W by L VGS minus VT and this is 100 microampere per volt square and obviously then VGS minus VT must be 2 volts or VGS must be 3 volts. Now, we already assume that it's in saturation region. That means that VDS must be greater than 2 volts. VGS minus VT. Okay? Is this fine? What I did here? I have a source which has a source resistance of 100 kilo ohm and a load resistance also is 100 kilo ohm. And I want to make an amplifier so that across the load resistance I get 20 times the input voltage. Okay? Now I have this idea that hey, I have a MOS transistor which can be used as an amplifier and I already have done some calculations. I know that the best way to use a MOS as an amplifier is to use it in saturation region. Okay. So if I use it in saturation region, all I have in the MOS transistor is a voltage controlled current source in the uh, as far as incremental uh, quantities are concerned. Now with a load resistance of 100 kilo ohms or a load conductance of 10 micro siemens, for a gain of 20, you need a transconductance of 200 microsiemens. Okay? Then I will get a gain of 20 or minus 20. We won't dis make that distinction now. Okay? And to get a transconductance of uh, 200 microsiemens, I need to have a gate source voltage of 3 volts and a drain source voltage which is greater than 2 volts and just for simplicity I will say it is 3 volts. Okay, that will satisfy. Yeah. Right? Now, this is the operating point setup. This gives me a transconductance of 200 micro siemens. The MOS will have that. And then, this is the picture I want to have for the small signals. This is GM, VGS, where this is gate, this is drain and this is source, RS, VI, RF, 
by the way if uh, some of you are still confused about what the small signal picture means please let me know because uh, that's extremely important the small signal picture refers to the incremental quantities you have some operating point values and any voltages anywhere changes the only the changes can be represented by this model okay the total quantities cannot be got from this model so now this uh, gives me i mean if this is uh, 200 micro siemens and that's 100 kilo ohms it gives me a gain of uh, uh, 20 minus 20 okay now of course what is this like i said this is the incremental equivalent or small signal equivalent of the amplifier that gives me uh, gain of 20 and this is how i set up the operating point now i have to now actually connect the input source and the load to the actual circuit to the real circuit so that final incremental picture looks like this how do i do that you understand what i'm saying the right the picture on the right side is just a representation for small signal increments i have to this is how i set up the operating point to this i also have to connect the load resistance i have to connect the input source input source means pi and rs so that finally it reduces to this if it does that then across rl i'll have 20 times minus 20 times vi okay how do i do that please think about it we'll continue that continue from there in the next class okay and this is how all of the synthesis will go you will have some function that function will be basically what should happen in the incremental or small signal domain and then you have to translate that to the actual circuit okay.